This is Food Safety First with your host, Ryan Rabdas. All right, welcome to another edition of Ask Steve, our, our portion of the show where our audience reaches out to us with questions, emailing us at foodsafetyfirst at fortresstechnology.com, and we look at the questions and bring it to Steve, get it directly from the source. So first question, Steve. I've had my detector for over 10 years, humming away, sitting in the corner, doing its thing. Why should I upgrade it? Do I need to upgrade it? And if it's not broken, don't fix it. Well, I'm certainly of the, if it's not broken, don't fix it camp on that one. However, I have to say that sometimes the, you know, the world has passed it by, perhaps. There might be features that are being required by the, by the market itself, especially the big supermarkets that 10-year-old detector can't do or can't do well. Certainly on our detectors, we try to, to build in that bulletproofness, that future proof that there's very few things that come along as surprises. So a 10-year-old detector for Fortress, we consider pretty new. And we have lots of stuff out there running perfectly. There are situations, though, where perhaps that product, that application, that there has been a new development, a new technology, a new something that's brought on an opportunity to substantially improve your performance that you're you're achieving and that would be something to really consider cool all right our next question is and it's along the same lines is we have customers that want the latest and greatest so we have customers that have the phantom metal detectors why should they upgrade to stealth why should they upgrade to interceptor yeah good question we got to first recognize the phantom was and is an awesome metal detector it's certainly at when it was developed initially in the late 90s 96 97 it was leap years ahead of anything on the market in terms of features and and the technology that went into making it work and so I, i wouldn't count it out performance is still still amazing it can still be supported by fortress so no reason to hurry on however we do love customers that want to upgrade and, and there are sometimes very good reasons. Sometimes, like I said before, the features, there are features become available. There are algorithms that improve that, you know, you need to look at. There's even some of the old phantoms, the hardware itself, uh, we've had to, just because the, the, you know, the chipsets we're using are rare um, from the 1990s, and we've moved on, the, the market's moved on, we can't, you know, we don't make those chips, somebody else does. So we make phantoms uh, now with new chipsets, so you could even just keep it as a phantom, but uh, upgrade to that. It, that means your support's going to go for a lot longer. Uh, but you're, while you're at it, you, you know, if it's in the food industry, a stealth has features that the phantom doesn't. And again, you've got comms opportunities for da- data logging, data tracking, event tracking that, you know, just basically a lot of opportunity for e- expansion of IO. So when your end user gets forced to have reject bin fulls and encoders and, and exit eyes and all these features that multiply, that's going to need a stealth to accommodate all of those, those features. And they're good ones. And then, but that can be, you know, those are bolt on to your existing detector. So it, you're not buying a new detector. You're just upgrading a set of electronics. There are features that we have, the interceptor, and even some stealth structure, coil structures, where you might be able to take very good advantage of the leaps of technology, the forward movement of technology that we've developed in order to, you know, gain substantial improvements in performance, which you know, the interceptor can, in some applications, can be, you know, substantially better performing, depending how difficult the product is. And those, you know, those are opportunities that have to be judged on their merit case by case. Is it worth it? Do we bring anything new to the table in terms of performance first, reliability, or, you know, just features that might be of interest to that particular customer? All right, so our next question is, and this is actually is something that we're seeing often, I guess, with COVID affecting our economy and the rise of online auctions. We're having a lot of call-ins of purchases from online auctions, and the unit doesn't work. That we bought this unit, it doesn't work. It doesn't suit our needs. What's happening there? Yeah, and it's, uh, I don't think it's new. This has gone on for quite some time. 
but yeah, buying a used metal detector is a seriously bad move. First of all, you don't know what kind of, what kind of life it's led, how it's being treated. But most importantly, good metal detector companies custom make or tailor their devices to a specific application. And at Fortress, we absolutely do that. So a detector bought at auction might be a perfect detector for running, you know, a box of cereal. And then a guy comes along and says, I want to run meat through it or frozen product or, or something else. And it's just not, it's not the right device. And it's, uh, it's not going to go well. So he's got a deal at an auction. He's going to throw it in the garbage. And, you know, that's just a bad economy. And it's a fact of life. It's going to happen. In some ways, it's, it's a good opportunity for us because we get to sell them the right machine, hopefully, <laughs> further down the line. Occasionally, somebody gets lucky and they get a great machine that's perfectly suited for their product and and there's no reason why it's not going to work and fortress will support it there's no no doubt about that okay this is another common question that we see is uh our customers want a complete hands-off approach to the metal detector they just want to plug it in run it and forget about it how do you feel about that what are your how can you can you comment on that if we've done our job right that'll actually work detector goes in runs i'd have to say that I would think somewhere around 80 to 90% of our detectors, the customer starts off on their own. They have no problem doing so. And that, that's, a, that's a good testament. I think it works. Usually they don't, haven't read the manual either, and they got it running, and it's fine. But there, there is great value, if you're going to live with this thing for a long time, and you, and you are, to understand how it works rather than just say, push this button, push that button, and you'll get your answer, which is fine, but you could get that from the manual. Uh, You can get that just by pushing the buttons. Getting some real understanding, basic understanding, you don't need to be a scientist, of how this device works in, in its most simplest form brings a lot of relief to operators, maintenance people. You can just see it when you do seminars at plants and and all of a sudden you see the recognition in their eyes going oh now I get why sometimes it rejects this product or not this product or I put the metal sample on top of the box and I get a different result than in the middle of the box and those very basic things that we cover in training just saves a lot of mystery and once you take the mystery out it's so much easier for these folks to live with this technology and we, we do this training all the time. We're really good at it. We like to do it face-to-face. At the moment in COVID, we do a lot of training online. We're, we're more than happy to do that. In fact, we got so good at it now, I think we can potentially offer a lot of online training going forward in the future. But it's, it's, a, it's a great investment, virtually no cost, especially online. Just Even if in-person training is rarely at very high cost. It's cost of getting somebody to your plant. But the investment in that is going to really pay off in lack of issues. And then when, when there are any, being able to deal with it very quickly. I mean, we have great response time from our service folks, but being able to handle it right there, right then, and understand why it happened and what to do about it, it's, it's a great investment. And just have, you can just see it with the way they then operate the equipment, how they live with it, how it becomes their friend instead of their enemy. This is, these are great results from just some very, very basic training. Perfect. Thanks, Steve. This wraps up another edition of Ask Steve. Keep your, uh, your questions coming at email them to food safety first at fortress and if you need training if you need upgrades reach out to us